What's up guys, CP Modi here, back with another video, and today we're continuing our Gaming On series, where we go ahead and answer the question, does more RAM actually give you more FPS in game? Now, back in the day, a little while ago, actually quite some time ago in the computer space, it wasn't too uncommon to throw in some more RAM and get much better gaming performance and just general task performance, as computers really took advantage of more system memory. However, with that being said, in today's modern computing world with multi multi multi-core processors and SSDs and all that kind of stuff, RAM isn't exactly making the difference it once used to make. But the question still remains, will I be getting more FPS if I add more RAM to my system for game tasks? Now yes, with that being said, if you are doing a whole ton of multitasking, streaming and content creation, adding more RAM is definitely going to give you a bit better performance. But today we're taking a single look at if you're only playing games, no background tasks running and you're not planning to use your system for anything else, if you're strictly only looking at a gaming box, will you see any better value putting in some more RAM than what you might already have at the moment? So with that being said, let's take a look at some of the games that we'll be testing today in terms of their minimum and recommended amount of RAM. And as we can see here, the RAM that they take as a minimum versus their recommended isn't too out of place. A lot of them are looking at around that 8GB marker for their recommended and honestly aren't going to be too bad for a lot of gaming systems out there. But we'll Will we see any more FPS if we go well over their recommended in our testing today? Now do keep in mind that actual speed of memory can change your FPS and if you want to find out more check that video right there. But again today we're strictly looking at the gaming setting and changing the capacity of RAM. All the RAM sticks that we are testing today will be at the exact same speed so a high speed kit with a high capacity won't necessarily affect our results here so everything will be set to the same speed. Now we'll get to this in just a moment but I did also to notice that in some games that were much more open maps, such as GTA 5, they actually suffered from having the lower spec of RAM. So even though the game might have this lower spec for RAM, the game did start to suffer a little bit. But again, we'll get on this a little bit more in just a moment, but this mainly comes down to their larger and more complex physics nature, needing more RAM to actually do so. But again, we'll touch on that a little bit more in detail once we get to those numbers. So with that being said, let's take a look at the PC we're gonna be testing here today. For our testing, I grabbed my ever-reliable kit of Crucial DDR4 2133 sticks, and we went from four gigabytes through to 64 gigabytes, again at the aforementioned 2133, with their i7-7700K. We could only go up to 64 gigabytes as that is the theoretical max that this CPU will support, which was kind of disappointing because I also too wanted to test out 128 and 256, but unfortunately we couldn't and I didn't have a motherboard or CPU that I could borrow at the time, so maybe that's for a future video. But either way, we did go up to 64 gigabytes and testing everything in between, with again the i7-7700K and also to the GTX 1080 Ti. Now I'm sure there's going to be someone out there saying that I should have tested 2GB sticks, but let's face it, Windows 10 64-bit needs at least 2 gigs of RAM, so I don't think many of us will be building brand new gaming rigs with only 2 gigs of RAM in there. But again, we did go ahead and test everything from 4, 8, 16, 32, and 64 gigabytes. Unfortunately though, not 128 or 256, as I didn't have a motherboard or CPU on hand that I could borrow or even have to go ahead and do these tests. But speaking of these tests, let's go ahead and start to take a look at some of these numbers. And as we can see here, the difference between 4 gigabytes and 64 gigabytes was a little bit noticeable here when it came to your kind of standard first person shooter type of games. And sure, don't get me wrong, there was a different difference here, but when it comes to, again, that first person shooter games, MMO style games and online games, I didn't really notice that much of a difference between a little bit of RAM and a whole ton of RAM. Though with that being said, once we jump into more open style games such as GTA 5, Just Cause 3, I did notice a massive change in the performance numbers. Because we test all our games at max settings 1080p, these are definitely fairly hard for the CPU and GPU to go ahead and run. And with only 4 gigabytes bytes of RAM, despite being the minimum for some of these games, I did have to drop it all the way back to 720p to get any sort of playable numbers. Not only were these numbers actually really low, I did get a whole bunch of stuttering and just 
unplayable gaming performance, it was a real downhill situation. GTA 5 was a really big culprit for this as it has a fairly advanced kind of physics system that does need a fair bit of RAM to sort of switch things in and out of the CPU. Just Cause 3 was also to a bit of a problem here, but again, mainly my biggest problem came to the GTA 5 scenario where I just could not play the game at all. Sure, we may have been reading around that 60 to 70 FPS marker, but literally it would get 60, 70 FPS, and then for a couple seconds there would be major stuttering, major dips in FPS, and then all the way back up to our rating. It was kind of all over the place and really fluctuating, and this is something that these numbers just don't show you. It was a really weird experience, but as soon as we popped this guy up to 8 or even 16 gigs of RAM, everything was perfectly fine and we got our typical numbers we'd expect from a GTX 1080 Ti and a fairly powerful 7700K. And again, this is just down to the fact that these are large open world games with a lot of elements on screen, a lot of textures that need to come in and out and a lot of complex physics systems going on, which means RAM is actually somewhat important in these types of games. However, again, looking at the numbers of your first person shooter type of games, 4GB did definitely give us a little bit less FPS, but it wasn't as noticeable as when we jumped into things like GTA 5. Though again, with that being said, once we got past that 16 gig marker, so 16, 32 and 64 gigs, we didn't exactly see the biggest jump in terms of performance like what we did between 4 and 8 gigabytes of RAM. And a lot of people's systems out there do reflect this, with the latest Steam hardware survey showing most people running 8 gigs of RAM on this system, and actually that 8 gig of RAM actually starting to be a little bit less popular, with more and more people going for 16 gig options, showing that the 12 gigs and more is definitely increasing in popularity. So back to the question that we set out to actually answer, does more RAM give you more FPS? Well, Yes, but also too, it depends. It depends on how much RAM you already have in your system. If your system is just scraping by with the minimum amount of RAM for the game or even just the minimum amount to run the system, definitely adding some more RAM will give you better FPS. However, with that being said, if you've got a super low end system, chances are you're not running a 7700K or a GTX 1080 Ti, so upgrading something like a video card or a CPU may also to improve FPS way more than adding some more RAM into your system. If you're looking at 4 gigs of RAM versus 16 gigs of RAM, there is definitely a difference here, however going from 8 to 16 is a less of a difference. Don't get me wrong, there's a difference across the board between 8, 16, 32, but they're really difficult to tell in person and honestly when I was sitting there playing the games between 8, 16 and 32, I've really had a hard time telling difference other than looking into the PC and saying, oh, it's only got 8 gigs of RAM or oh, it's got 64 gigs of RAM in there. So. Again, at the end of the day, it really isn't too much of a difference when you do get into that high spec market. But if you are just scraping by, you will see a performance increase in grabbing some more RAM. But again, do keep in mind that our tests were done on a clean system with no web browsers running in the background, no extra tasks running. So if you've only got four gigs of RAM and you've got a whole bunch of stuff running in the background, this can also to bring that FPS number even lower, which will be an even bigger problem. And from looking at the numbers, it does seem that 16 gigs of RAM seems to strike that sweet point at the moment between spending a fair bit of money on your RAM thanks to DRAM prices being absolutely ridiculous, but also to not going crazy for 32 or 64 gigs of RAM. Personally, I do like the idea of running a gaming rig with 16 gigs of RAM, but let me know what you run down in that comment sections. Do you run 8, 16 or 32 gigs of RAM or maybe even more? Again, let me know down below. If you want to pick up some of the RAM that we did test here today, I'll leave that down in the description description box but otherwise once again thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one